Hello and welcome to Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's gay. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Yes, happy Independence Day. Happy birthday, USA. Let's meet the panel. Lily. Frank Esposito. Charlie. And Josh. And today it's an honor to have a very special uh, guest. Uh, he was a um, Lieutenant Governor nominee to Chris Daggett, an independent candidate. He worked for two governors in New Jersey and was an assistant in writing the law for charter schools in this state. Well, right. Dr. <laughs> Esposito, it's an honor to have you. Thank you. So what are we going over today, Lane? Today we'll be discussing Wit and Wisdom by Benjamin Franklin. Mm. Wonderful proverbs of Richard Richard's own mm-hmm. Wise words from a woman, Iser. Well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that. I, we, Franklin loved women, clearly. But whether he was really a womanizer in the modern sense, I doubt. He was just a very charming guy that, that people loved, and women in particular loved him because he gave them a lot of attention. Especially when he so, was a diplomat in France. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he, of France. course, while he, while he was in France and, and, and involved uh, with several women socially in, in kind of a salon setting, you know, where they would meet for lunch and there'd be other people there and they'd talk yeah, like this group, the round table yes. discussion of, uh, of issues and ideas. Probably um, cocktails as well? Uh, so yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he, 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 did, uh, he did like his wine. And, uh, he often said that uh, uh, if, if there's life after death, he would like to be preserved in Madeira. Uh, so, so. He was a wild card. Well, he did oh, say, right. there's that quote that's on all those shirts that you can get at certain breweries. It says, beer is proof God loves us and wants us to be happy. <laughs> I thought that was cookies. For you it is. Oh. <laughs> what is our first question? Do you believe that this wit and wisdom, along with essays from this period of time, should be categorized as literature? Yep. I agree. Absolutely, because... If you were to say that this was not, then you would be excluding the essays of Thomas Paine. You would be excluding the transcendental uh, works, much to Brianna's dismay. I was going to say, next thing you know, you'll be saying civil disobedience isn't lit. What do we say at the beginning of every show? All forms. If it's written work, it's game. So, of course, uh, this is Franklin's... uh, written, uh, this is what, this is his written mind. Uh, Can I extend that a little bit? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so by that definition, let me play lawyer here. Is the Rosetta Stone lit? The Rosetta as in the, uh, the translation? The, the, the chunk of rock that has the three languages on it. It's how we know Sumerian language. Mm-hmm. I would assume so. I, yeah, I would say so. Because if, if that's how we know a language, a language is how we communicate. I wouldn't argue against right. that. Right, no, I would agree. Mm-hmm. Right. Your case has been discussed. <laughs> <laughs> but Franklin's writing is, is homey, uh, it, it's um, humorous, yes. and it is literature. I mean, he was really, the, I think, one of the first great humorous writers. And it, a lot of it is, is it stems from his playfulness. He had a kind of playfulness. He liked to play jokes on people. And, and you see that in a lot of his writing. In fact, there's, there's something he, he wrote and put in the newspaper, which he met as a joke, and it was and as a political comment about the fanatics who were burning witches. And, and he he wrote a story about witches being burned in Burlington County. <laughs> Appeared in the newspaper. Of course, half the people who read it believed it, and and he was just saying, in effect, the people who are burning witches are really you know off center. Uh, at the least, uh, but people took it seriously. So much so that even today you can find some historians who write in a book that the only killing of witches that occurred in New Jersey was a burning of witches in Burlington County. They, based on this based on the joke. humorous <laughs> joke of Franklin. Uh, yeah. Would that, be cons- Excuse me. would that be considered satire? That they were, uh, yeah, uh, Absolutely, were, yeah. So. yeah he, he was one of the first to uh, well, probably, probably the greatest American satirist in that century. 
So he's I'm one of the first he, Americans. In that so turn, he's, he's, the, he's the, the head of the, uh, the list of uh, American the president. Presidents. Absolutely. He, was, he began so much of what, uh, would you put him at the, the top? The Founding Fathers. I was going to say, hey, but when you get later on with the whole thing of satire, you get Mark Twain, you get Kurt Vonnegut. Then, yes, uh, Franklin had to have inspired them in mm -hmm. some particular way because these people were also touching on an area that was very uh, controversial and uh, Franklin wasn't afraid to uh, back off on it. That's the essence of what uh, the Constitution says. Uh, right. The First Amendment that these founding fathers uh, leaned on and the ones that they passed uh, Well, were. Jefferson wrote the amendments because he was afraid of big government. Mm. He was afraid the people would have no freedoms. Jefferson wrote the, uh, he wrote that because they thought he conveyed himself best and he would be able to, uh, right. he was probably, it was probably the safest but yet the most efficient way of doing it. Franklin was a loose cannon. I don't know what would have happened if you had Franklin writing the Declaration of Independence. Well, the essays are lit. They have tone, you know. They're they're forthright. They have a thesis. They have supporting examples. They have all that stuff they teach us in 151. Oh, that is correct. Arguments. But, but he did edit the Declaration. He did as, edit it as part of the committee that he was on. He what he contributed. Uh, right. He was not right. one uh, I was talking was about the constitutional good. amendments. You were talking about yes. Amendments, yeah. That was, that was a yes. that was a co uh, contributed by mm -hmm. yeah, ideas that everybody yeah. everybody agreed. It was collaborative, but it was really motivated by Jefferson's anti federalism and his fear of massive government. It's funny that you still had people uh, the, uh, John Adams, Alexander Hamilton that were very much the complete opposite. They were federalists. Yes. Mm. Hamilton, who founded what city? Because he had a vision for hydroelectric power. It's in New Jersey. Patterson, New Jersey. Yes. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Give this man a cookie. <laughs> Dr. Esposito knows everything about New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Even the fact that uh, uh, Santa Claus in the red suit is a New Jersey figure. I love Santa. That's right. You read Thomas Nash. Santa, Santa loves Mars cookies. Cartoonist mm -hmm. during the Civil yeah. War. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All ready. Mm -hmm. we'll go to our next question. What do you feel was Franklin's intent in creating a section of Poor Richard's Almanac explicitly with philosophies? I think it would be to teach a lesson with a philosophy itself. Uh, a philosophy, I, I don't know if he, if he created it, but um, teach a man, give a man a fish and he has food for a day. You know, teach a man a fish, he has food for the rest of his life. Now that's a philosophy that I was born on. That was a little bit older. Uh, yeah, I, he built, I like fish too. A little bit of butter, some spice. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a food tangent. And well, of course, I, on the fish sub subject, he said, "Fish and visitors stink yeah, after three, three days." days. I thought, yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> People overdo their welcome, and in many cases, uh, fresh uh, the freshness of food does as well. But back to this, uh, Poor Richard's Almanac was primarily uh, astronomy uh, at astrological uh, projection. Uh, the, the farmer's almanacs that we see today were heavily inspired by uh, Ben Franklin's uh, uh, calculations. Uh, Jefferson was more of a fanatic for keeping track of uh, the weather, but Franklin, uh, it was a common interest per se, but with regard to the, uh, the proverbs, uh, he would have them as a little bit of something light and humorous. Uh, and something you can some remember point. easily. Yeah. It wasn't always just one, but there were uh, a few of them in every edition of <laughs> the 26 years that it ran. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm not even 26. I'm still thinking, man, a long time. Is long. Well, it's like the tagline. You know, something has to draw you in, and then you can get your oh, like the hook, right? Yeah. Yes. The hook. Like in literature, I don't, if you don't know that, it's called the hook, the attention grip, the attention getter. That is correct. Did I get a cookie? Maybe in a little bit. Okay. You give every book, like, uh, 
Editors say you have five lines to thrill a reader. Okay. You have to have your first five sentences be great, you know. It was the best of times, it, is the winter, it was the worst of times. Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer. You gotta grab, if you don't grab them at the beginning, a lot of readers are just going to put it in the trash can. They're just gonna mm -hmm. put it down. It's true. Even yeah. just one sentence nowadays, you gotta hook them. The last time I saw Brenda Toner, she asked me to hold her glasses. Gregor Samso woke one morning from disturbing dreams and found himself a bug. One time in the band camp. Or a vermin, depending on the edition. Right. <laughs> Was there anything else anybody wanted to add? Well, I, I love the one that, that says, creditors have better memories than debtors. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> Um, that is yeah. definitely true. Or, or God heals and the doctor takes the fees. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're going to be going right to that in our next question. Okay. Indeed, there's a bit of overlap. Which of Franklin's sayings are you most enlightened by? Better a slip of the tongue, I mean, better a slip of the foot than a slip of the tongue. That was mine, because I always fall down. It's okay you know. to share. You can have common interest. Uh, so, what makes that one Maybe that, that the most enlightening? Of today. Hmm? What is it that makes that the most enlightening? Because it's easy to be like, you can look like a fool tripping over your own feet and someone yeah. will forget it the next day, but people mm -hmm. never forget what you told them. Like if you went back on your word or something, that can stick with you forever. Mm -hmm. Reputation can be everything. Oh, that is true. The fact that uh, if you... Uh, are you trying to get on the fact that if you punch someone in the face, uh, the bruise will go away, but if you call them some derogatory term, they'll never forget that? Well, let, let's find Especially out. Especially not. Go ahead. I don't want to do that. We're on. Oh, we wait, 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 wait. PG-13 here, I was going to say, it depends on where you beat them and whether you negotiated it first. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I'd ra I rather, I rather fall down a flight of stairs and say, Honey, yes, remember that eggplant parmesan I promised? Well, then I'm having pasta with all. Okay. <laughs> what and then inside the camera. <laughs> what is this? Um, Already, what was your... Uh, <laughs> uh, the, that there are only two certain things in life, death and taxes. I think that says it a lot. Oh, I like that one, too. The only things you have to do are pay taxes and die. Yeah, exactly. Unless you're thorough. Mm -hmm. Hiding in the woods yeah, isn't always the best you alternative. Risk, uh, you risk going to prison. <laughs> <laughs> throw, throw we all do. Prison, but granted, uh, he did get his point across. Mm -hmm. There was one penny, right? That he was going to pay for this. Or a couple. I know he, or a he dollar? refused to pay five dollars oh, to $5. get a. Uh, to get some kind of uh, certificate that showed that he graduated. But I don't know about the uh, the poll tax. The poll tax. The poll tax. I don't know yeah, how much. Yeah. Hmm. And back then, five dollars it was it was equivalent to having a, a hundred to the, in today's dollars in today's monetary value. Just a little fun fact of the day. But he was like, "Why should I have to pay for my diploma? I earned it." That's how I feel. Mm, I'm graduating next semester. Well, uh, what did you have to contribute to? Uh, because you and Lily had the same. Yes. Well, like I said, I rather, I rather. Um, well, well, then again, we have people with the cameras and the Facebook. Oh, that guy fell down a flight of stairs. Oh, that guy just got fell, fell down an elevator shaft of forty-five floors. <laughs> that, you know. But then going home to the wife and saying, you know what, blah 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 blah. What did you say? I love you, honey. I'll cook dinner tonight. I'll sleep on the stairs. <laughs> I fell down an elevator shaft today, okay? I don't know what I'm... I'm not in control of my words. It seems as if uh, those kind of physical uh, occurrences are laughable. Yeah, you it, say it, something it, controversial and it could scar you for yeah, it, quite a while, if not... Yeah. You know what they say, Charles? Marriage has three rings. There's the promise ring, the wedding ring, the suffer ring. Ah! Uh, that's why I'm staying single. <laughs> the quote that I chose. Well, the mood ring, and it turns yellow. Or if, if it, you know, you, I had a friend. I gave a mood ring. I gave her a mood ring. You turn her finger green. <laughs> yeah, it turned green. And I found out the hard way. 
my eye was green for a while. I had a brown eye and a green eye. Hmm. The Pretty quote sweet. that I chose was, uh, <laughs> content makes poor men rich, discontent makes rich men poor. What, what I found enlightening about that is the fact that you have so many people that make remarks about their, uh, their fiscal state of well-being and they don't compare it to the luxuries and the uh, events that they tended themselves to. You can uh, find uh, different ways at uh, having a good time, but yet not uh, as, uh, there's a saying, uh, living like the Joneses, having to live like someone else in a, uh, an uppity kind of way. But uh, you can have just as much fun uh, practicing uh, ideas of content, preserving, uh, saving your money, Staying home, reading a book, doing research. I don't book on this. As opposed to uh, going out on a cruise that you cannot afford because both neighbors that live alongside you went on luxurious cruises to the Bahamas, then over to Europe, then back to uh, Jamaica and back to America. Jamaica. Sounds like a great America. trip. It does, but if you, can't, if you can't afford it, then you still weigh in their luggage. You're before <laughs> that you were discontent. Well, but at least in, in a bet. decent position. But now you're paying for it. Oh yes. But so, so your so, bill. I so Franklin would say, a penny saved is a penny earned. Means a penny in a box of luggage a, is the modern interpretation of what he said. That but apparently he really said penny saved <laughs> is two pence. Oh, goodness mm. gracious. Right, yeah. Which is true. You're, you're holding the one penny over oh. right, right. to the next. Do right. you have any uh, final points? I know that uh, you wanted to yes. talk about Benjamin Franklin and his connection with the, new, uh, the Jersey Devil. Yes, yes. Uh, Where? A, a book uh, that, I, that I'm working on with Brian Regal, who's a, a professor of history uh, at Kane University. Taught a history well, alchemy class recently. Yes, yes, a brilliant, a brilliant young historian. Uh, Brian and I uh, are doing research, and, and part of what uh, he came up with in his research uh, on the Jersey Devil is that there may be uh, an established connection between Benjamin Franklin and the Jersey Devil. And it's because the competitor to, to Franklin in, ter in terms of selling his almanac, the Poor Richard's almanac, was a man by the name of Titian Leeds. Now, you'll know that a lot of the interpretation of Jersey Devil is called Leeds Devil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mother Leeds gave birth to mm -hmm. 13 children. The 13th mm -hmm. was a child of the devil. Mm -hmm. What we believe is that there's a connection there because what Franklin did in 1733 was to predict that in, in that year, uh, his rival, Titian Leeds, who did the rival book, the rival uh, almanac, um, was going to die. And in kind of a spirit of jest, Leeds responded. He said, well, I'm not dying that year. I'm dying a, little, a couple of years later. So when 1733 came, what Franklin published was Leeds' obituary in, in, <laughs> oh, and yeah. in a newspaper. And Leeds was still alive. And so he maintained, Franklin maintained, that, Le that Le the person who claimed to be Leeds after Franklin published his obituary was really an imposter. So when Leeds really did die in 1738, Franklin wrote something in the newspaper saying, well, at least the imposter now has given up the roost. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, so, so I can tell I didn't write Not only did he inspire uh, satirical right. authors, he also inspired the National Enquirer. Right. <laughs> but, was, but see, again, it tells what a brilliant businessman and, and seller of newspapers Franklin mm -hmm. was, because he knew that, that because of that dispute between the two of them, the root of which was he wanted to put Leeds Omnac out of business as a competitor. And it's a business motive, right? But what it caused would be greater sales of his newspapers because he said, readers, you need to keep reading to see who is right, yeah, me or Leeds. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a brilliant modern business 
uh, approach or technique. But the connection continued uh, even after Leeds died because Leeds family continued the almanac. Mm. And what Franklin started to do was saying that Leeds made a bargain with the devil. Mm. And this is where the Jersey Devil stuff starts to come in. Mm. In fact, what um, uh, Dr. Regal found, which was really astonishing, was he found a piece of letterhead from the Leeds family. Uh, and the letterhead had a, uh, an engraved drawing of a devil face on it. So it, it appears that the Leeds family even accepted, probably yeah, again in jest, up. right, they picked, picked up that, that identification. And, and so uh, it's probably not an accident that, we, that the whole story that gets made up over time is that it's Leeds devil. Mm. The Jersey Devil is Leeds Devil. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's something we're pursuing even further, but it, it partially explains the Jersey Devil and also explains the appearance uh, of the Jersey Devil in literature uh, by appearing before a woodsman by the name of Vance Larner, which Dr. Regal and I believe is probably didn't really happen, it was made up. But Vance Larner does this really right even before Franklin is dead this this account appears of a woodsman who sees the Jersey Devil and describes it in modern terms deer-like creature with leather wings that makes shrieks in the pine barrens makes shrieking noise in the pine barrens now what we think happened was that Franklin may have planted that in order to keep the the, the momentum going of this legend of the Jersey Devil so it may well be uh, previously unknown, but it may well be due to Benjamin Franklin. Thank goodness I don't live near the woods. That is quite a connection to have yeah. Franklin and Leeds and the devil. Yeah. yeah. Anybody have any additional final thoughts? Josh, what's up behind you? I'm not going to fall. Alrighty, if you're interested in looking into uh, Benjamin Franklin's uh, Wit and Wisdom, uh, this uh, copy of the uh, Dover Thrift uh, publication of uh, Proverbs from Poor Richard's Almanac, uh, you can find it uh, easily on Amazon, possibly at another outlet. It's only two fifty. And some guy. Thank you. You can oh. also look them up online, but I like to have a physical copy of the book. And these are enlightening. You are going to want to uh, uh, dig deeper into these. Uh, and You'll learn something new every day. Absolutely true. Already, be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. Until then, keep reading. And have a good time at the 4th of July. Mm -hmm.